Hey Brick Maniacs, welcome back to another Friday sit rep. We got a lot of awesome stuff to look at today, including the release of the new Panther and our birthday sale is still going strong. So you can use that promo code BKMB day, save yourself 23% on almost everything. I do want to clarify though, I know there's been a ton of hype uh, with these both of these spearhead kits, the Panther coming out this week and the Pershing coming next week. We talked a little bit about it on Monday. I just wanted to circle back and clarify. The only one that comes with the uh, with the uh, spearhead book with that uh, officially signed uh, nameplate and everything is the Pershing pre order coming next week. The Panther does not include the book, but you're going to want both if you want to complete the bundle as well. So just a little heads up there, a little insight for those who may have been confused. They're going to get two copies of the books if they ordered both kits. It is only the Pershing uh, and only the first hundred that is going to feature uh, those books as well. So, and then once again, I know Dan talked a little bit about this too, but both of these kits, I believe uh, this will be the only run they get in 2022. So if this is on your list, make sure you act now uh, because there won't be a restock come the holidays, etc. as we move further towards the end of the year, the closest that you see these sets return would be in 2023 so but enough filler information now let's dive on in take a little closer look at some builds We actually have quite a bit of printing here already for this prototype model and my goodness is it coming together well you can already see kind of back on that engine there just how nicely those prints are coordinating across those elements so way to go slam <laughs> because this is looking absolutely fantastic but otherwise I've got Dan joining me to talk a little bit more about this I know we've shown it off a couple of times uh, but these are quite a lineup of kits we have coming up here uh, so well we're excited and uh, we wanted to pass that on to you uh, tell me a little bit about this build here Dan now that we've got some more greebles going on well this is the Befeels Panther so we've never done one of these we've never done this Befeels it's 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 a it's a you know a shortening of a much longer yes. contraction of a much <laughs> yes. longer German word uh, basically means command command tank. Um, so that's why it has this like bristling with antennas. Mm -hmm. We have you know extra receiving, extra extra broadcasting antennas um, for different frequencies. So this is like the unit commander would be riding in this tank. He has a big powerful radio. He can he can mm -hmm. he can be in touch with headquarters and all the other tanks around him. So. Um, in order to do that, they have to do some changes. They don't have a, there's no coaxial machine gun inside this turret because there's a gigantic radio set there. Yeah, sure. Um, and, uh, and other things, they, they don't have as much ammunition stored. So it's, it's, it's literally designed to, you know, it has the offensive firepower of, of an, all the rest of the Panthers, but it's, it's designed to be like the master Panther. Mm -hmm. The master <laughs> Panther. That's yeah. a good way to put it. <laughs> so when, whenever, whenever the allies would see that, 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 that antenna. That star, that star antenna, they'd be like, ooh, that's the one we want to get. Yep, got to um, knock him out first. Yeah, well, good luck because it's a panther. <laughs> so um, this thing was pretty, by the front, the frontal arc of this thing, if you were facing the enemy, which is typically how you'd want to be when you're in, inside of an armored vehicle, mm -hmm. it is almost impossible for any allied gun or you know tank to actually penetrate that front of that hull. Mm -hmm. um, there's just nothing on the battlefield short of like a monster three-inch gun or something like that. That's it's actually going to punch through them, right? Right, right. So these things would show up... Uh, and, and the Shermans would have, like, the only way that they would have a chance against it would be either all to mass firepower or get around behind it. Or mm -hmm. the, you know, the backside of the armor would be weak. So it was it was a formidable tank. Some would say the best tank of, of World War II. The only the only problem is because it was the best tank of World War II, they couldn't make enough of them. It yeah, right. Such, a, such a, a fine piece of engineering. But on the other hand, it was just not sustainable. They made, like, 6,000 of these things. and I mean, it's amazing they made 6,000 of these, these things so, so late in the war with such limited resources. But on the other hand, couldn't make enough to, to, to make a difference when, when the, the Americans and the and the Russians were cranking out like T thirty fours and Shermans like right. you know at, a, at, a, at a like ten to one ratio. Not exactly the the mass produced situation. So this one specifically that you're talking about the feels. Um, what what uh, tell me about the story itself here in relation to the Pershing. Well, the one that we're doing the the, the idea of this is is that um, we're we're kind of. Uh, recreating that bat famous tank battle that happened in front of it wasn't even a tank battle it was like a, it was like it was a very small battle mm -hmm. um, between tanks that happened in Cologne near the end of the war in 1945 mm -hmm. um, where famously a, a panther was knocked out in front of the Cologne Cathedral kind of like you know that's the heart of Cologne with the, the the Americans trying to reach the Rhine River and the Cologne is on the very uh, symbolic right, in that right sense, on the yes. west bank of the river and, and they tried to get to the bridges where the where the um, the cathedral was and, and you know blocking the way was happened to be this panther and a couple of other tanks that took their toll on the advancing americans until the the one pershing from the third armored division the the, the you know spearhead um came through came around the the, the back of the block and, and uh 
uh, had a, basically had a duel with this Panther. Um, it was just that the Panther hesitated. They were both had their guns aimed at each other. Mm-hmm. Um, what the heck is that tank? Too late. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't a Sherman that they were expecting. Um, so the the you know the 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 Pershing won the won the battle, and, and that you know that 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 Panther was much photographed. And actually, the the the, the inter, you know the the gunfire between the Pershing and the Panther was was fully recorded on a on movie as well so yeah that's pretty incredible very especially well for the time yeah, yeah that's yeah. that's amazing there happened to be a a war war uh, photographer there and he got set up he saw what was coming and, and got set up and, and, and was able to actually uh record the, the the battle wow so when talking this model specifically do we got any updates i mean obviously the printing is incredible but talk to me about play features hatches well, all that kind of fun yeah stuff. i mean this the one thing about this thing it is it does have this working suspension i mean as much as you can make a working suspension on a model that's so this, this yeah size, right, right. that's kind of flat so yeah yeah so it, it does have have sprung suspension you know if you push it down it'll it'll pop back up mm-hmm. so it does have that spring-loaded suspension it's just kind of like a new one on this the, the panther always had sort of like semi you know our, our models always had semi-functioning suspension this actually is fully functioning it's got suspension. a nice bounce to it yeah right right, right. um the this is the first new panther turret you know if you if you go back and look at, at my panther models going back like you know a dozen years or so they all have the similar the same turret this one's completely new um just wanted to do something more with some of the pieces that were available now yeah okay um, and you know make it just try my hand at making it a little bit a little bit better um you know you still have opening hatches you've the 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 crew compartment I had, I had to do some major i mean the, it looks the same as the older the older models mm-hmm. uh, but it's not i mean this this the sides of the turret are, or the sides of the hull are, are now one piece so we can facilitate the printing it gives us like room to open these hatches all yeah over. so and they got the integrated brick arms which is awesome to see yeah right here the, the little ball turret mm-hmm. front, which i love the printing on yeah that's, look that's at that detail awesome. that's really really cool to see <laughs> yeah and the same with the front of the mantlet here you got this mm-hmm. whole this whole piece is printed i mean uh, the sides will be printed. I, I've seen the artwork. It's just we, you know, haven't gotten around to doing it. Yeah, it's still, still a prototype. 100, 100, 160 printed pieces on here. <laughs> so, so we're still in the process of putting the final touches. This will be printed. Everywhere you see, there's no printing. You know, mm-hmm. like the back here, the, the side is there's the side of the turkey. It will all be printed. Um, you know, it's just. I'm loving it. I guess the only thing that's not going to be printed are these are the wheels, wheels right? Which is exactly. which is actually not unusual for the Panthers. They would come out of the out of the factory with uh, the whole thing would be painted this dunkel dunkel gel. This it's kind of like dirty yellow color, mm-hmm. uh, which is actually closer to tan. Um, and then they would either factory paint them with this two two color paint, or they would do it in the fields. A lot of times they would just get field field modified, field painted. Uh, this is a typical uh, pattern for the the camouflage. I mean, there's several patterns, and there's this is this is a, a, a model, a, 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 a model, mm-hmm. which actually is not the first Panther; it's the second Panther. Sure, <laughs> the first Panther, for whatever reason, being the, the D model, um, but this was the A model, which was a, like a second generation Panther. A lot of the deficiencies they found at the Battle of Kursk were, were rectified in this model. Uh, not the final version, uh, which a lot of times the final version would actually have a factory applied camouflage, sure. so a lot more uniform than this like kind of airbrushed in the field field look. But I, it's just cool that this, the, you know, the, the the camouflage crosses all the all the seams. Yeah, it's incredible to you know? see the coordination. <laughs> Absolutely. So when you get this, it'll actually come with with a bunch of pieces that are of of the of the the, the tiles will actually be in their jig that they were printed on. You have to pry them off. And stick oh, them fun! On them. Yeah, so <laughs> you'll have a little a cool bit of work to, work to do when you, when you get this to put it together. So. That'll still be cool to see, kind of a uh, behind the scenes if you pick up this uh, if yeah, this love, kit. Love how the some... camouflage goes around this corner. Mm-hmm. I'm seeing some of these pieces for the first time. I'm kind of like, ooh, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> definitely going to be an incredible build. And like I said uh, in the description, it's definitely going to take the top spot uh, of your German armor collection one, for one, sure. One thing we should talk about that this does come with default comes with the tank commander, comes with the Panzer commander. Mm-hmm. There will be additional crewmen, so you do have these two open hatches here. You'll actually be able to buy crewmen to have sticking in these hatches. If, oh, if nice. you so desire, I mean, you just close these. I mean, it's not like they're going to be riding around in battle with sticking out of the turret. It kind of defeats the purpose. Mm-hmm. Of it. But, but you will get the tank commander, and there will be this option to buy at least two crewmen that you can uh, you can have riding along. And they have different headgear, custom headgear. The crewmen actually have a new headgear, like a new 3D printed headgear that we've never done before. Sweet. Side caps with the... the, the, the uh, radio uh, headphones that is going to be absolutely awesome so you can customize it a little bit if you want to make sure you've got a, a crew for all of the hatches etc uh, and as we continue to uh, create this epic duo with uh, week one now here with the panther available on brickmania.com 
Dan, thanks for checking in. All right, and stepping out of the design room now, taking a little closer look at the uh, Opal Blitz via our digital spinny render here. Uh, we do have a completed model, however, for the physical showcase. Uh, so we will take a little bit closer look here uh, as we check out the updated version of the Opal Blitz. Quite a nice upgrade. Uh, I know there's definitely some scaling stuff uh, that has been updated for this, as well as some new part swaps. And obviously the fact that the entire thing is printed. Look at that handle artwork. <laughs> that's just absolutely excellent with that the shadow and everything going on there. Really, really sharp looking. You can see we got a nice grill going on there, some headlights, whatever the heck this thing is up top, uh, and then some printing along the doors. As you can see, we do have the canvas cover here on the back as well, which you can build with or without it. Uh, some dually tires there in the back. Plenty of space. And like I said, you can customize your build uh, or build multiples if you're looking to uh, use some of your own parts and create a convoy. Um, this one does include a minifigure. And here he is, pretty standard soldier for the time, work in a variety of situations. But you do get the minifigure included with this kit. All in all, it's an excellent kit, nice little update, uh, and hopefully will be kind of a staple uh, of that World War II lineup going forward. As for standalone minifigures, this week we're taking a look at the uh, U.S. Navy Dress Blues because the uh, Navy's birthday is on October 13th. Got a variety of genders and flesh tones. What we do with these is kind of attempt to make the most generic uniform we can so that everybody can feel represented. Um, obviously there are some serious challenges that come to that when it comes to specific ranks, etc. But that is why we have our epic tiles now available so that you can pick up uh, the closest approximation as to your uh, yourself or your person that you're picking this up for. Uh, service uniform and then you can pick up that rank tile to represent them uh, a little bit more accurately. Taking a look at our female light flesh minifigure here, you can see they have a slightly different headgear there with that uh, bun incorporated in the back. Otherwise, everything else fairly similar across the board. Plenty of variety in this lineup. Uh, and like I said, we bring these back for the branches birthdays. So we'll have the dress whites back on Monday. These available right now. And then they will not restock until this time again next year. Uh, so if you're looking to pick these up for a variety of occasions, whatever your reason may be, make sure to do it now uh, because we'll be moving on to the, to the next birthday and then the next birthday after that uh, before we uh, restock these guys again. And finally here on the sit rep, we have a sneakily epic uh, custom created element release this week. This is the high phase that first appeared on the bartender in the Doomsayer Brew Pub, uh, but has been more recently used uh, to customize the Hollywood uh, add-on pack that we used to release for the EZ8 in the past to kind of complete that War Daddy look. Um, but this will be a good one for a variety of figures. If you've got some that already have hair printing that can incorporate with that uh, top piece, otherwise it does look pretty good as you can see here with the clean shaved sides, like I've got our, our Roman warrior set up. So those are available in uh, brown and black. Uh, depending you know, pretty much on your eyebrows or whatever color you're trying to match on your figures. Uh, so we'll see if we have more colors in that moving on here into the future, but for now, a couple to get you started. And uh, like I said, kind of a sneaky release because I know when we initially dropped that Doomsayer Brew Pub, a lot of people were like, wow, that, that hair is next level, and it absolutely is. Um, and now you can pick it up and customize your own figures without having to pick up an entire set <laughs> to be able to do so. All right, that'll do it for me here on a Friday. Like I said, that uh, birthday sale does end at midnight on Sunday, the 9th, I believe. So make sure to get your orders in before then. Otherwise, we'll check back in on Monday. Thank you very much for watching.